Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of July 5, 2021. This week we've got four topics. The first one is the air car, and I'm sure you've seen the air car. I've had probably 20 students send me the link to uh, to this uh, cool concept. It's not actually, it's more than a concept. This thing has flown, so we'll talk about what happened there. We'll talk about a 737 that did a water landing, and um, and the, the two pilots were extremely, extremely lucky. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a bizarre story coming from Arizona, our home state, uh, in Casa Grande and uh, in the airport doing some things that are kind of weird. And then lastly, we'll talk about Bombardier that has a pre-owned program and uh, we'll talk about some details. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week is called the air car. And the air car is this concept of a flying car. You know, we, we've seen quite a few concepts over the years, or at least I've seen a lot of concepts over the years of a flying car. Uh, this is something that we've been seeing in science fiction for many years. And uh, and this concept actually flew. It, it, it flew, this is, uh, it looks like they've, they've completed several flights already. Uh, it flew for 35 minutes. The range looks like it's 600 miles, which is, which is a lot. Uh, I'm sure it's a range between flying and driving. I'm not sure how to calculate the range on this one. Uh, but it takes about two minutes and 15 seconds to transition from car to airplane. The wings fold, as you can see in the video, and then kind of retract in the back of, uh, of the, that car. And then you get to basically just uh, drive around town. The car cruises around 105 miles an hour-ish, uh, when it flies, that is. And then it has a payload of around 400 pounds, 200 kilograms. So. If you want more information, uh, there's been a ton of articles. We have one for the BBC uh, website right here that you can look at and get more information on that. The next thing is uh, kind of a, a really interesting, I wouldn't call it a water landing. That's what it was referred to at first, but I think it was just a, a crash in the water, quite frankly, uh, off the coast of Honolulu in Hawaii. And the Coast Guard happened, so this is a Boeing 737-200. They made a night emergency landing. And we were talking about this in the office. Um, a night emergency landing is like the worst possible scenario that you can think of. Well, maybe not the worst. I guess landing in the trees is probably a pretty bad one as well. But um, Having flown in Florida, very close to the water, I can tell you that it was always something in my mind uh, when we flew at night because as soon as we took off, the water was right there. So um, landing in the water is, is hard. Getting inside the water is tough. If you ever flip the airplane, if you end up underwater, very difficult to find your way up. But anyway, um, the Coast Guard rescued the two pilots. This was a cargo flight and both pilots were alive and it looks like one is in serious condition one is in critical condition but still they were able to rescue them one was in the tail of the aircraft the other one was found clinging to a debris and um, it looks like from the ATC communication that there were engine failures two engine failures which is extremely extremely rare uh, this specific aircraft was built in 1975 which may sound like it's pretty old but it's actually not all that old for an airplane so uh, we'll have more information as the preliminary report comes back from the ntsb but uh, dual engine failure uh, something that you would not expect uh, especially from a large aircraft so with that said let's move on to the next story which is the story for uh, in arizona with casa grande airport the airport belongs to the city so uh, this skydiving company from uh, from Phoenix, it's called Phoenix Area Skydiving, wants to open up their business at this airport. So they approach the city and the city says, no, you can't do it. So the company goes back and sues them and says that the reason for refusing the company to be at the airport was not good enough, they win. So the company wins in court. And what the city decides to do is, instead of granting them access to the airport, they decide to buy a five acre piece of land that's three miles away from the airport and designate it as part of the airport, which doesn't make any sense, right? You've got this, this piece of land that's three miles away that's technically because the city said it's airport then automatically it becomes airport. Now the worst part is, the FAA got involved with all of this and they told the city that they had to provide access to the airport to this company. Um, and then and then that's what they do. That's what the city does. And then the FAA says, yeah, it's okay. It, as part of the lawsuit, it's fine. We, we're going to rubber stamp this and then we're going to move forward. So 
Um, AOPA get involved, the National Business uh, Aviation Association get involved, the Helicopter uh, Association International get involved, and they basically help this, this uh, Phoenix company to, well, go after the city and basically saying that this doesn't make any sense. The fact that you have a piece of land three miles away doesn't make it airport. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. So uh, I just thought this was interesting. I don't think it's over yet. Uh, apparently, they're even talking about moving maybe a helicopter company over to that part of the the airport or the supposedly airport. Uh, I don't know how you operate from an airport if there's no runway and if you can't obviously conduct your business. So anyway, I, I thought I would report on this because it was kind of bizarre and uh, we'll, we'll find out what happens hopefully in the future. Last piece this week is uh, Bombardier is creating what's called a certified pre-owned program for Learjets, Challengers, and Global Jets. So if you're in the business for uh, getting a, uh, a, a private jet, then it looks like uh, they have a, a new program that's going to allow you to access these aircraft. Uh, One-year warranty, and then it looks like they offer operational support as well. So that's it. That's all I have for this week. Like, subscribe, put your comments, do everything that you do. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.